Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to find the interval convergence of this power series by using the ratio test. So let's go ahead and indicate that this right here is our a n, and let's put down. We'll be doing this by using the ratio test, right? So by the ratio test, and we know that the first step is to take the limit as n goes to infinity, and we have to look at the absolute value of a n plus one times the reciprocal of a n like this, and this is going to give us. Plugging n plus one into all these n's, so we will have three to the n plus one power, and this is also on the top. So put down x to the n plus one power over. We have n factorial originally, right? Plugging n plus one into this n, we will have n plus one in a parentheses, and then we have the factorial, and then we do the reciprocal of the original. So we multiply by this will be on the top the n factorial. And both this and that will go on to the denominator, which is the three n times x to the n like that, instead of the absolute value. And now focus on this part here, break things apart. Here we have three to the n times three to the first, and this is x to the n times x to the first, right? And let's also break down the n factorial, n plus one factorial. This is the same as saying n plus one, and the next is going to be times n. And then times n minus one, n minus two, and so on. In another word, I can write n plus one factorial as n plus one times n factorial. That's the breakdown for this, right? Okay, now cancellation. This is the best part, isn't it? Three to the n cancels out with this. This is x to the n cancels with that. N factorial, n factorial. So nice, isn't it? And we're still putting an equal sign because we're just doing algebra. Okay, on the top here we have three over n plus one, and this is still in the absolute value, and we have this x, right? So this is just put the x on the side, and that's what we have. And now what's next? We have to take the limit as n goes to infinity, and it's just this part, isn't it? Well, as you can see, on the top we have three, and this is n plus one on the bottom. So this term is goes to what? Goes to zero, isn't it? So Take the limit. That's why I draw the arrow. We will have three over infinity. So this is going to give us zero times. We still have the x in the absolute value like this. But you see, in this case, this is kind of like the result of the limit. But zero times absolute value of x, it's always going to be zero, isn't it? And usually at this point here, I will tell you to set this to be less than one. Because we are using the ratio test, we have to make sure that the limit has to be less than one in order for us to get a convergent series. Because zero times the absolute value of x is always zero, because zero is always less than one, isn't it? This is true,、um, always true, like this. With this being said, it doesn't matter what you pick for the x value. This is always going to be true. That means it doesn't really matter what you choose for the x. You can plug into this x here, and then you end up with a series, and that series is always going to be a convergent, right? So this is rather a special case because you end up with zero for the limit after you do the、uh, ratio test, and it's always true for this inequality, and this is going to be an indication that the radius of convergent. For the power series, it's infinity, meaning that you can use any value for x. You can use, you know, negative ten, negative five hundred. You can use seventy-two. Doesn't matter. Plug into the original, the series will converge. The radius of convergence for that power series is infinity, and when you have this, the interval of convergence it's going to be really easy. Oh, by the way, the center is at zero, but it doesn't really matter because. Uh, the interval convergent it will be going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Of course, when we are dealing with infinities, just parentheses because we can never include infinities. So this is it. Nice, right?